am Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. We're going to have a little bit of a talk about William and Harry. So Prince uh, William and Prince Harry. And uh, if this uh, happens to include some of the other royals around them, uh, we'll see how that goes. But I thought it'd be an interesting topic. Haven't talked about the royals in a bit. And uh, it seems like, what's the mystery? Why can't, uh, especially when uh, the family, uh, the royal family is in so much uh, pain, why can't they uh, bring everyone together? So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So I thought it'd be an interesting topic. We haven't touched on the royal family for a while. And uh, I'm going to leave the uh, questions uh, open-ended. Um, <clears throat> so we'll just see where it goes from there. But it, it has occurred to me, I mean, all this silence around uh, Princess uh, Catherine. And uh, why can't this family just, I mean, that's what the people are, are starving for. Some honesty, some real, um, some, some logic speak out of the palace instead of this hiding all the time. So the princess is sick. We all get sick. They're missing a huge opportunity to deal with that. Um, of course, I understand they have to somehow couch all this for the children. Um, and it is a sensitive time. The kids are exactly the age where anything that gets out in public is going to affect them. But guess what? They're going to hear the lies that the presses, various presses, are going to make up to, um, you know, to make up for the, um, unless they're somehow controlling the press from behind the scenes. Who knows? But uh, why can't William and Harry find a way to get this together? But before we do any of that, let's have just a moment, you know, of meditation. So, why can't the Royal Brothers get it together? What is so difficult about that? I, I got a feeling that the table is kind of shaky and I can't really do anything about it right now. So, sorry, but I'll work on it so that next time it's a little bit better. So, uh, what can the cards tell us? Just three cards about William. William, just to get us to the spot where his head is at. Okay, so William, what uh, can the cards tell us? about him. William. It just seems, why is it so difficult for these guys to um, to talk? Well, I guess, I mean, I have rifts in my family too. So, this is the, the first card up then is the devil card. That's interesting. So, it's uh, being tied to lesser intention. I'm asking about William, specifically about William here. The devil card tied, and list. it's so eerie. This has got a woman who looks sickly, and can you see this little face right here staring here? It almost looks like death staring her in the face. Well, I guess that's the devil. But uh, so the devil card comes up for get us uh, what's going on with William. The uh, the next card up is strength. Very interesting card to get strength. What have we got here? We've got a goat, and um, and this uh, person here is kind of grabbing onto that goat's strength. Uh, this is about William. And then the last card is the High Priestess. So this is definitely a multi-layered card here. This is Catherine. This is the um, situation that she's in. This is compassion. This is caring. This is her mother hanging around her. But this is William. These are the influences that are around him right now. The first influence is being tied to lesser intention. Okay, uh, And it all hinges on this ailing uh, woman here. The second one... <coughs> is unfortunately for him he has the strength to continue this facade 
And then uh, the high priestess just tells us what a highly emotional situation. You know, the high priestess also kind of gives you, as a reader, a little bit of authority to go ahead and interpret that card however you like. So I just see it as the women around her, that feminine healing power. And um, I wonder if her ailment doesn't, isn't something that's specific to women. So that's where William is at. He's mostly controlled by being tied to lesser intention. That's a shame. I kind of thought he was the peacemaker, the brother who would, um, you know, make, make clear the path for his younger brother. Um, Harry. Speaking of younger brother, let's get three cards just to see where is Harry right now regarding this, you know, especially with all this that's going on at the palace. Where is Harry? Emotionally, kind of. Okay, first card up is the Princess of Coins. Uh, this is Megan. So Princess of Coins. So the coins are uh, value, money. And so Harry is in that mode uh, with Megan leading the way of how to make money. The next one is the, um, what is this? The Eight of Wands. The Eight of Wands. Very interesting. So this is a, a, you know, so many things happening at the same time. So his father's sick, Kath is sick, uh, William won't have anything to do with him. They're trying to get their lives uh, going in a meaningful way, I presume, or to make money anyway. And then the next thing about Harry is, again, strength. So the brothers do share a common trait, their strength. Interesting. So where is Harry uh, emotionally a little bit? Making money. A lot of issues on his plate. Uh, he wasn't uh, prepared or trained to take care of. I presume William, you know, expects his life to be filled with with obstacles. And, uh, but again, he's got a good amount of strength to back him up. So we have some commonality in that the two brothers have strength, but it also means they're headstrong. So, is William, let's do six cards on William. William. Okay, this is gonna be just about William. Is William, going to have what it takes to make some resolutions uh, with Harry to somehow bring everybody back together. Look, it doesn't matter at this point who's guilty of what. You know, it's water under the bridge. At some point you just have to say, yes, let's uh, try to be a family again. And uh, so William, is he going to have the strength, the willpower, the want to get his, um, his family back together? Really for the sake of the monarchy, honestly. Uh, six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. William, is he going to be able to get things together and bring his brother back into the fold? What's going to happen here? Signify a card for William. Okay, this is the magician. This is a great signifier card for him to have. So this is uh, the this person is is equipped to take to handle anything. He has all the tools at his disposal, at his disposal to get a thing done. And as the presumptive king, you know the next king, uh, he certainly should have. What's the challenge to that for William? Is this Queen of Cups? It's all the emotion that's wrapped up into this. But I would say, why can't you put the emotion aside and do what's right for your families and that'll take care of the emotion. But the problem with him having all these choices as a magician is um, the emotions bring a heavy baggage with them. The basis of all of this, just the foundation of all of this, is the page of swords. So swords of truth, justice, rules, and law. And um, the basis of all of this is just a small amount of authority. Okay. The uh, past of this is the Knight of Coins, so that's William fighting for his value. And this even looks a little bit to me like uh, the King, so King Charles, um, right away. That's in the past, because we know that this is, we know what the outcome of this is, and we know what's going to happen sooner rather than later with Charles. Uh, the sky of this uh, for Prince William is the Princess of Wands. In the sky of this is Catherine. Actions, plans, forward movement. Princess of Wands is looking very uh, trepidatious here. But look, if you'll notice, she has put one foot forward. She has one foot forward, and this is what's in the sky in this reading. So this is hopeful. And then the likely outcome 
for William uh, getting something back is the Hierophant, which is perfect because the Hierophant is the monarchy. It is uh, a structure by which something uh, runs. It could be government, but in this case it's the uh, monarchy. So the likely outcome of this, of course, is that he's going to be the king. Uh, let me do four more cards for William. So, but I want to ask specifically, is he going to, is William going to be the one that brings uh, Harry back into the fold? The very uh, self of that question is right here. No, it's the high priestess. It's something more than William. It's something more than Harry. It's something more than Catherine. And the two of coins is finding that balance. Now, it's funny that we get this maiden carrying water because I have always said it was Catherine who carries water for that family. I think this is Catherine. I think in the end, um, I think she may be holding out now, but I think finally she's, it's, things are going to clear to her and she's going to see that she's going to have to be the one that carries the water to get this um, done. In the sky of this is Justice. Very interesting card to be in the sky in this reading. Justice is just fairness across everywhere. And then the final outcome, the likely outcome for everything having to do with William is that he will be the Knight of Swords. Yeah, he is right now the Knight of Swords. He's the presumptive uh, uh, king. Uh, swords of truth, justice rules, law. He's the knight. Look, and look at this. We have the two kings in going in different directions. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. So the likely outcome is that he will fight for what he feels are truth, justice, rules, and law, regardless of what that is. One more card to say, will he, William bring the brothers together? Will it be William? In the end, through other people's influence, that bring the brothers together. We get the princess of coins. I think this is Catherine. I think this is going to be Catherine. That brings everybody back together. So now let's go to the Harry side of this coin. So Catherine, uh, it looks like things are going to be clearer for her. Uh, you know, nothing is clearer than when you're faced with mortality. What happens uh, uh, at our last breath, we say, please God, help, it, help me. Or we cry for our, our mothers. Or we, uh, a mother, um, mourns for her children, uh, which is all those things are, are what can certainly be happening with Catherine right now. So, but let's talk about Harry. Harry. What can the cards tell us about Harry in all of this? Um, six cards. Okay. One, two, three, four, Six Harry. The cards tell us about him in this mess. The signifier card. Look at this. This is the Four of Swords. Um, it's caution. Okay. The Four of Swords is being very careful before you make a move. I think this is where he feels like he is. Um, he's just trying to be careful not to make a move and to be. Contemplate. A lot of people will disagree with that, but that's what this card tells me. But the challenge to it, however, is the lover's card is his is his his wife. The basis of this whole thing is uh, the high priestess. Wow, she keeps coming back. She keeps coming back into this reading. So the past of this reading is uh, death. Wow, the deaths have already been ordained. Charles knows it's coming. I think Catherine knows clear when it might be coming. But that's in the past. That's already happened. That's that's decided. In this guy we have the Ten of Swords, which is the end of a cycle. The best he could hope for is to have his head cut off, I think. Look at that. The best he can hope for. And the likely outcome for Harry uh, with this Princess of Wands, what he's left with is his Princess of Actions, Plans, and Forward Movement, getting things done. So it looks like total estrangement uh, for Harry. Uh, let's do four more cards. I really don't want to. Let's do four more cards for Harry. Um, very self of that question. Is it just mean total estrangement for him? Well, the Emperor. It's all up to the Emperor. This is William. 
this is not Charles. Maybe it is Charles to get the ball rolling, but it, it, it is the, the monarch of, of, the, of the present time. Uh, and the eight of coins up here is practicing your craft till you get it right. Yeah, it's in the environment of him trying to learn how to make a living. Um, the uh, hopes and the fears for all of this is, look at this fortune, the wheel of fortune. The hopes and the fears for all of this is that he gets some kind of momentum on maintaining a fortune. Um, I think that's it with Harry. It's where he's at right now. And the likely outcome for everything for Harry is uh, this Five of Swords, which is disappointment. Okay. Royally, on the royal side, there's disappointment. And all of this is him practicing more about getting his personal life busy than mourning over uh, the sadness uh, happening in the royal family. And we'll do one more card for Harry, too, to see if this gives a little bit of clarity. And uh, the Two of Cups, of course, is making amends making amends somehow so it's up to both the brothers it doesn't look like either one has got the correct motivation at this time and it seems like it's going to be Catherine who provides that whenever that is who knows but I think as our time gets nearer we become more contemplative about those sort of things so that's where the video reading is Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. Okay, so this is the newest edition. This is uh, the second time I purchased from this group. Uh, and uh, the, these cards are called Revival Art Tarot Second Edition. And uh, they're from Taracho uh, Studios, which you can see right here. And they come to me, I think it's from Russia via the Netherlands. But uh, they're a lot of money. And um, But they're beautiful cards, and you'll see. So they come in a very typical little cardboard box. No big deal there at all. Um, then the um, instruction booklet, again, is not uh, anything to write home about. It's just a typical little instruction booklet. The one good thing is that it is easily uh, read. And uh, in the uh, regular, uh, in the lower arcana cards, they've got an extra card in each uh, suit. So you know, you've got cups, wands, swords, and uh, I can never think of the forward suit off the top of my head. Uh, pentacles. Uh, but so you, they go all the way to the Ten of, of Swords, for instance. The next one then should be a page, but here we have a Princess of Swords. And then after the Princess of Swords, you still get the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. So you have one extra card for each of those four suits. So instead of 78, uh, 79, uh, 80, 81, 82 cards total in the pack. So that's interesting. So if that Princess um, confused you, you could just take those four cards out and use them for some special occasion or never use them at all, or put them in there and uh, this gives you an idea of how to divine the extra card. Uh, so, very interesting. Then, the cards themselves. They're really good stock. Uh, once you get them broken in, and what I mean by that is, you know, when they come off uh, production, they're really pressed together and there's no air between the cards and you can't hardly get between them. So it takes a little bit of shuffling and, and getting them uh, some air between the cards uh, before they're usable, really, and, uh, and not sticking to each other. And then the back of them is beautiful, and I haven't discovered anything particularly unusual about the back, um, except maybe until this very minute. Let's see. If you have the cards this way, you'll notice that there's a very small little rose right here. So if you see that small rose here up in the right-hand corner, then you know this card is going to be upright as it should. However, if this card was inverted, that small little rose becomes two roses. Okay, so if you see it, two roses up here rather than one, then you know that card is going to be inverted. So that's the example. Now, I like knowing that. I don't know. It just gives you a little edge uh, when you're dealing the cards. And now I can straighten them out and not have to turn it over. I know that this, this is uh, inverted and this is straight. Now, to look at this art is amazing. And each one of these is a work of art that's referenced in the guidebook. For instance, uh, if I look at this uh, Fool, number one, of the Major Arcana, and it tells me that the Fool uh, is, in fact, the name of that piece of art is called A Jester by Philippe Mercier. And, um, and then it gives me the uh, divination for the card. Uh, beginnings, uh, possibilities, pleasure, etc. The next card, the Magician, if you were to see that one, that is a work of art called The Astronomer by uh, Candlelight, The Astronomer by Candlelight, and it's by, I guess it's going to be Garrett Du. So, uh, my foreign pronunciations aren't very good, but I do give it a try. So, the cards themselves, you can see they go right to the edge of the card. They're beautiful pieces of art, and thought has gone into choosing these cards 
for the um, uh, position they stand for. The one thing uh, that's not uh, evidence, for instance, um, they're not always um, clear that, for instance, a two of pentacles is a two of pentacles. It might not have two pentacles on the card to tell you that. So they're a little um, interesting there. You should kind of look through the cards and understand what each one stands for first. But, I mean, look at them. They are absolutely beautiful. And it always feels to me like uh, intention has gone into making the selections of these actual pieces of art before uh, they uh, turn them into uh, tarot cards. And I like that. And I think you like them, too.